Hey guys, Solomon Tokyosin here. I'm getting a little fed up with how everything's going right now. In the election cycle, everybody's going mad, everybody's talking about, you know, their party, their politics, whatever's happening, this person versus that person, this person's cutting that person off. It's, it's all a mess. It's all a mess. And like, we, we all know the system is broken, the system is not working, the government has no idea what it's doing, or worse, it does, and it's doing it anyway. And all the people screwing up the system are all begging us to vote for them this election. And it's a basket case. The whole thing's messed up. And this is the problem, is everybody wants to play the game. Everybody that wants to play the game shouldn't be playing the game. The people wanting to play the game for power, prestige, fame, money, power, are the very people that you don't want having any of those things. And the people that actually, it seems to me, we're talking to people and seeing how people are operating, it's the people that don't want those things that really should have those things because they don't want them. They don't want to be tainted by the corruption that comes with those things. And ironically enough, the very people that don't want to do it are the ones that should, in fact, be doing it. The very people that don't want to lead are the ones that should be leading. And this is the problem. is society is going in a bad direction. If you've read a history book, you know where, if you look at other times in history and other civilizations, when they get to this point of massive inequality, massive political, you know, stockpiling of resources by the elites and the poor getting poorer, the rich getting richer, you know the trope, you know the cliche, it's, and, and it's terrible. But you look at any other civilization, when it gets to this point, things go bad fast. And they don't get better, they, they get a lot worse before they get better, and, and we are starting to recognize this, and a lot of people are starting to recognize this, and it's becoming a massive problem. But nobody wants to deal with it. Those playing the political game, they're, they're, you know, they're playing a game of popularity and they want the things that they want and they're, they're, there's a lot of agendas behind, behind the scenes that are just not being addressed. And it's really starting to bother me where this is all going. I, I'm seeing fantastic leaders in the community get burnt out trying to do what they need to do and what they see the issues being. And I see in those same communities, it's, again, it comes back, it doesn't matter whether it's in parliament or in the local community groups, it's those that don't want power but see the need to do something that are getting cut down and burnt out and attacked from all sides. And it's those that uh, you know, have the egos and the greed and the self-serving and the, the look at me, I want to be important. It's those people that are destroying lives around them and usually attacking the ones that have the capability to do what they need to do. And it's, it's horrible to watch. I'm seeing very good people being run down and broken down and destroyed and it's not okay. And we need to stop this and we need to actually as a society and as a civilization, we actually need to take stock and we actually need to look at things and go, right, who's leading? Who's doing a good job? Who's doing a terrible job? Who is questionable? And as a society, we need to take stock of this and we actually need to be a little bit more self-aware and look at the issues as they stand and actually pick our leaders for their leadership capability and their ability to work and actually get the job done. And all these people who are just wanting to get to the top of the totem pole, just for being at the top of the totem pole, we, we need to discontinue, we, we, it's just like, no, enough, you, you're not playing the game right. And you know, we look at the government in, in regards to this and these political parties that we have in power and you look at the system that we have. Now we've got MMP. We have MMP, which has a 5% threshold, which means, theoretically, if a political party can get 5% of the national vote, they can represent in Parliament. Yet we have everyone strategically voting, causing massive spoiler effect, which means that everybody 
votes against the guy they don't want in power, they don't actually vote for who they want in power. And people come to me and they're like, Solomon, you, you know a few things. You know a few things, or at least you're loud enough to, for us to think you know a few things. Who are you voting for? Now that is a fundamentally bad question. This is a democracy. You, as the voter, should be looking at the political parties and the candidates and figuring out who you want to represent you. You shouldn't be voting for who you don't want in power. That ruins the whole system. And it turns back into a two-party race. And this is what we see. We have National, we have Labour, we have, you know, the Establishment Party, we have the Greens, we have the Maori Party, we, we have you know, all, all the acts, all this nonsense. And even the voters who vote for these parties, half of them don't even like the party. They just don't like the other guy who's running. And they vote against who they don't want in power and who they don't want representing instead of actually voting for the people that they want to represent them and their vote. It's back, we've got it backwards, folks. We've got it backwards. You should be voting for who you want to represent you and your, and, and your communities, not the other way around. But of course, this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen and we see the system getting worse and we see it all going downhill and government spending is way out of control. Taxes are way out of control. Inflation, way out of control. You, you, you have, you know, on average 17 to 33% tax rate on your income and then we've got 15% GST. Then you have petrol tax and you have excess tax and then you've got road user charges, then you have rates, then you have all these various things. And you know, for a society that is taxing its population at 50%, you know, 33% plus 15% plus all the others. Yeah, For a population that is taxing 45 to 55% of every dollar, our society is going backwards. Roads aren't being fixed. Children's literacy and, you know, education is going out the window. Social housing, what's social housing? We have a housing crisis. We have a building crisis. The government has made it untenable for first home buyers to get into, you know, their, their first place. It costs too much money to build a house with, you know, council and compliance fees and everything else. It's, a, it, it's very, very hard to get into your first house, whether to buy an existing house or to build a new house. Land's not available. The rules are too strict. There's so many hidden fees, it's ridiculous. So it's difficult to buy a house. It's very difficult to buy a house. At the same time, the government has made it incredibly hard for people to buy houses and then rent them out. We have so many people in the country, but so many landlords are just shutting their houses down and not letting them out because it's becoming too difficult to rent it out. So we can't build new houses. People can't buy into their first house, but you also can't become a tenant because the government has made it too hard for landlords to let out their properties. Now, don't get me wrong, the landlords should be doing like, you know, plenty of work and all this other carry on and making their houses livable. But if you have no choice and if you are facing homelessness and you can't find a rental because the government has made it too hard for landlords to let out their properties, substandard or otherwise, what are we doing? New Zealand produces enough food to feed 40 million people. You know, I know families who can't afford to feed themselves or their children. What is going on? The whole thing has gone wrong, folks. Society in New Zealand, it's all gone wrong. And let's not even start on all the other rubbish that has gone down in New Zealand over the last three to four years. It is absolutely abhorrent. And what are we doing about it? Coming back to the election, it's Vote for me, we'll fix the problems. Or vote us back in. We'll make sure we do it properly this time. We won't screw it up this time, we promise. When a political party or a politician promises anything, watch out. It's not good. But what are we actually doing about it, folks? You see, I for one am sick of waiting for somebody else to fix the problems in our country. I am sick of waiting for somebody else to take on these issues. We can't, 
We have so many. Uh, New Zealand is so empty. There's, there's, we've only got five million people, and we're sparsely populated. There's enough room for everybody in New Zealand currently. I don't, I, I don't believe in bringing any more people in when we've got all these other issues going on. We shouldn't be allowing people to immigrate to New Zealand when we have highest levels of unemployment, homelessness, people struggling to, you know, survive. When we don't have houses available for new home buyers to get into and we, you know, we can't have, people can't get into rentals, we should not be adding any more people to the population through immigration when we can't even look after ourselves. We, 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 can't, we can't bring more people in. There's already, there's not enough to go around currently, but that, that shouldn't be the case. It's not true. There's so much land. There's so much land available. We have the resources available. We have the food available. But we can't afford to live, we can't afford to eat, we can't afford to home ourselves. And people, people are defaulting on their mortgages at an alarmingly high rate. Crime is through the roof. Gang violence is going through the roof. Like, well, you look at the violence between the gangs right now. Now, why do gangs form? Gangs only form when society doesn't work for the lowest common denominator. If you're poor and you have no way up and you have no community because everybody's at each other's throats, what are you going to do? You see everybody else getting into gangs, you get into a gang as well. This, this is what happens, especially amongst young men. Young boys and young men cannot see a way. If they can't get a house, if they can't afford to feed themselves, their, their families and the children they may have in the society that we have set up for them, then they will look for alternative ways to provide for themselves and those around them. And, that, and the gangs offer that perfectly. We've got it all wrong, folks. We've disenfranchised the very people that our socialist state was set up to cater to. Like I said before, in a society that is taxing its income earners, you know, 40 to 55% of their income to provide a socialist utopia to make sure that those at the bottom of the rung can survive, and they can't survive, and then we're surprised they end up in the gangs. We're surprised they end up in trouble. We're, we're, we're surprised they become violent. We're surprised they turn to alcohol and drugs and gang life. We're doing it all wrong. We're doing it all wrong. And yes, we want to save the environment and we want to be, you know, clean, green New Zealand. We're not, by the way. We're not clean and we're not green and the green's algae colored. Children's attendance rates are down. And I find this ironic because we have so many teachers' strikes because teachers aren't getting paid enough. Yet parents all over the country are getting letters going and complaining about children's low attendance rates for unwarrantable reasons, yet they don't classify when teachers go on strike. They don't count that as a good enough reason for the children not to attend school. It's like, what are you supposed to do? It's absolutely ridiculous. Attendance rates are down. Children's education has gone out the window. We're, we're so fixated on making everybody happy and not offending anybody that we're losing an entire generation to not hurting each other's feelings. And we're destroying the younger generations to appease what? Feelings. Oh, somebody's feelings might get hurt. Get over it. Enough is enough. Grow up move on. But this is the problem, folks. These are all things at massive scale. And it is very hard to pick one or two things and fix it without it being impacted by everything else. If you're going to fix one thing, you have to fix them all. And this is where we as a society and as a nation and as a civilization need to actually sit down with each other and talk about these issues and talk about what is going on. The problem we have is nobody is willing to sit down and talk. Difficult problems and difficult situations are always resolved at the end of the day by talking. Sitting down and having a conversation. You look at all the big wars around the world. How did they all end? People got around a table and talked. How many family breakups could be avoided? If people would just sit down and talk, 
And this is the problem that we have in New Zealand is nobody is willing to talk. Nobody is willing to sit down and talk about the issues and risk being offended and having their feelings hurt. It has to stop. We're losing our country. We're losing the generations. We're losing our children. For goodness sake. Parents, grandparents. You know what I'm talking about. It's not okay. We're on the cusp of losing everything and for what? So Solomon, what do we do about all this? What do you want us to do? First, come, come have a conversation. Come talk with me. Based in Timaru, my shop is at 82 Stafford Street. I'm not hard to find. I've intentionally made my life, I've based my life around the concept of being easy to be found like you can come find me come have a conversation but this is the thing is we need to start working together and actually working together not just talking about it for all the various groups it doesn't matter whether you're NZ loyal or NMP or or any of these other groups or it, it doesn't matter who you are or who you are aligned with for reference, I don't align myself with anybody. Why? Because I look at the bullshit that is going on within all the groups and the in-group fighting. It, I find it utterly detestable. We've got so many issues that we are facing down and we resolve to nitpicking each other. We arrange our firing squads in circles. We all know the problems. The freedom community in this country is pathetic. It is horrible and it's so messy and vile for those of you that think the government's out to get you even if that were the case they don't need to your own groups are doing that for them if that were the case if the government is truly out to get you they wouldn't have to because you and all your individual groups fighting each other and tearing each other down are doing your enemy's job for them the freedom community in this country is its own worst enemy, never mind anything else. You all need to grow up and get over yourselves. Eat some humble pie. Have a little humility. Grow up. Because while you're fighting each other and tearing each other down, the entire country is going to hell in a hair basket. And I've had enough. So what do we do? We talk. Come together. Leave your weapons at the door, leave your allegiances to whatever group you've come from at the door and come as equal New Zealand and Kiwi citizens and come together and actually have a talk. And we figure it out. And we figure out what needs to happen. What needs to happen? People need to be fed. Children need to be fed and clothed. Children need to be educated. Mothers need to be supported to raise their children. Fathers need to be supported so they can work and provide for their children and the mothers of their children. Grandparents need to be involved in actually helping develop the next generation and not tearing down the generation that they raised for not doing a good enough job. We need to stop attacking each other. We actually need to work together come together and actually support our communities, grow and develop into the communities they need to support the individuals within those communities. These families need to be housed, need to be clothed, need to be employed. People need to work. People need to actually get ahead and actually be, be shown a way where they can get ahead. Young men need to be shown that there is a ladder they can climb. It is imperative for young men to struggle and grind against the adversity of life in a distinct, honourable way. Young men are not shown an honourable way to achieve what they need to achieve in life. They need to be shown a way and a mechanism and a path to follow that they can see will provide for not only them but their, their children and for the women that they wish to be with and have children with. Men need to be shown this. Young men need to be shown this. And it needs to be provided for by the older generations that are, have come before them. Allow these young people to work. Give them something to work in. Give them something they can aspire to. 
come together, show them how they can provide a house and a career that can support children for the next generation. You wonder why so many young men are turning to drugs, alcohol, mindless entertainment, pornography, endless games on computers and in front of movies and TV screens. They are disenfranchised. There is no point working hard if there is, they can achieve nothing. They are looking at this, they are looking at the interest rates, they are looking at inflation. These young people, they're not stupid. They can see what's going on. They know what's happening in the world around them. And they look at it and they go, no matter, even if I work 80 hours a week, I will get nowhere and I will be able to provide nothing. So why should I? This is the system that we live in. This is the country that New Zealand has become and it is devastating. One of the reasons that I have kept quiet or not been as loud as I should be is because I have been sitting back and looking, look, I'm 32 years old. I haven't achieved anything great in my life. I barely have my own house in order. And you know what they say, if you can't get your own house in order, leave the rest of the world be. And I look at myself and I haven't done anything spectacular. I haven't done anything of particular note. So why should I be loud? Why should I talk about all these issues? So I've stayed quiet for far too long, thinking that somebody else out there knows better and somebody else out there knows how to do this better somebody else out there is more intelligent than i am more eloquent than i am more professional than i am better presented than i am so i have stayed quiet and i have held my tongue until i have come to this realization that no one knows better nobody has a better option nobody has a plan this is why i've been i haven't brought my all to the game because I've been waiting for someone better to come along. And I finally got to the point where there, I, I, I've come to the realization that nobody has a plan. Nobody has a better idea of what's going on. So there's, if nobody has a plan, I have a plan. And this is what I'm bringing to the table now. We need to save our country, folks. I can't do it on my own. That is one thing I cannot do. I can't do it on my own and I need help. I need help to do this. But there is a plan. There is a process. There is a way forward. But I can't do it by myself. I'm doing my, I'm doing my damnedest. I'm doing my best to grow and develop and support the community that I have in Timaru. I'm working hard at that. I'm making sure that is happening. I'm providing a place that people can come they are unjudged. They can come, they can have they access to good food, good conversation. They can talk about their problems and you know, I provide a wall for them to bounce ideas off. I'm doing my best in Timaru. But for the rest of the country, the rest of the island, the rest of the community, I can't do it on my own. I need your help. And that involves having, coming and having a conversation. Do I think it's do I think it's the best plan out there? No, I don't. Could a better plan or idea be developed? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it comes back to you. You on an individual basis. I need you, person watching this. I need your help. I don't know what that help looks like. Whatever you can bring to the table, whatever help and service you can provide, whatever resources you can provide. I, I've done my best to make myself as transparent. And, and accountable as I can in order to do this work. But I need your help to do this work. And if you support the work I'm doing, please, I need your help. I really, really do. And I'm trying to be humble about it. And I'm trying to do it the right way. Unfortunately, there's no instruction manual for how to do this. What instruction manual is there to save your community and to save the generations and to save your nation? Where's the instruction manual for that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess it up. I'm going to mess it up and I'm, I'm not going to do everything right but I promise you this I will do my damnedest and if I'm messing up come and talk with me and tell me I don't know what I don't know I don't know when I'm messing up and I, I and I need you 
people that follow me and support what I'm doing. I need you to hold me accountable because I'm only one guy and I, and, I, and I don't have it all figured out. But it seems that like, unlike these politicians and all these figureheads and you know thought leaders and all this other rubbish, who holds them to account? And whenever somebody does hold them to account, they, they you know lash out and attack. And, and that's not what I'm trying to do. So yeah, but no, that's my piece. That's all I have to say on the matter. I, I have so much more to say on the matter. But at the end of the day comes back to a conversation because end of the day folks it's our nation it's this beautiful beautiful country that we live in in New Zealand and the South Island it's our forebears they built this for us and we have squandered it and not only for ourselves but our children and our children's children a good man leaves an inheritance not to his children but it's children's children. We don't even have anything to offer the next generation, let alone the generation after. And we need to fix that. And we need to do it as a society and as a civilization. Otherwise, what's all this for? I have an idea, I have a plan. And if you want to be involved in helping make that plan become a reality, please come talk to me. Offer your support. Give me a phone call. Cell phone number is 27 9372 You can message me via this page. I'm not hard to find. Come talk to me. Let's have this conversation because enough is enough. And I'm done with the politics. I'm done with the infighting of all the groups. I don't care what group you come from. But if you are intent on working to save our country, I don't care where you come from. Who you're aligned with, your background. I don't care what you've done in the past. It's what you do going forward that counts. Because we're running out of time and we're running out of options, folks. You all know this. And it's time to actually do something about it. My name is Solomon Tilkilson of Timaru. It's time to get something done, folks. Otherwise, our children, we're now, I, I don't want to be old sitting with my grandchildren and my grandchildren asking, Granddad, what did you do? Or why didn't you do anything? I want to say I at least did something. And if you're in that camp, join me. Join me on this mission. Join me on this journey. Join me on this project.